Okay, so I'm back. Got to make a pit stop and get some gas. And yes, my husband is following me. That's another story. Um, but yeah, okay, so this weekend I was truly, truly tested. Um, we had been planning this event for about six to eight weeks. And obviously you have all these ideas and plans of how everything is going to work out. Long story short, I could not get on a plane. There was a lot of issues that happened um, that caused us at the, to be at the airport from like 11 a.m. to 8 o'clock. Our main plane had mechanical failure. They kept bumping, pushing everybody around to the point where it was getting closer and closer to the last flight. And I needed to be in Atlanta by 6 a.m. the following morning. So I looked at my husband. My husband looked at me. And I said, babe, we need to get on the road. Mind you, earlier that day, a friend of mine decided to drive because we were going to drive back. He decided to drive the car for us so we can fly and get there faster because he brought all of our products and boxes and everything um, that we had to bring with us for the event. So by eight o'clock that night, we were headed to the house to go pick up a few more things because the plans had changed. We realized we had to get on the road. So we were exhausted because you know we ran the entire day to prepare for Saturday. But we figured, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. So we packed up the car, Hopped on the road about 9 o'clock, okay, Memphis, Tennessee. My husband drank a five-hour energy, me, him, and my daughter. All got in a car and drove to Atlanta. Did not sleep the entire way, not even my daughter. We got to Atlanta at 5 a.m., okay? The event started at uh, 9, but we needed to start setting up at 7. I was extremely exhausted, but I said, hey, I can't lay down. I got to keep it moving. Hopped up, took a shower, got dressed, spruced up my face a little bit, and was downstairs by 7, 7.30. And we were setting up, and we had the event go all the way until about 6 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock that evening. Went upstairs, took a shower, got dressed, headed to the bowling alley, and we hung out. My point in that is, there were some things that I had to do that I did not want to do. I didn't want to get on the road at 8 o'clock at night. But what happened, I went and paid, I was going, I was willing to pay other airlines for a ticket and they were all delayed. And I realized, you have no choice, you need to be there. So, we made it here, had to do a presentation on absolutely no sleep, stood throughout the entire day at the event, went and got dressed and went and exerted more energy bowling. But you know what, I didn't skip a beat, I didn't, I, and I don't want to say I didn't. The Lord gave me strength to sustain because there was a mission that we had to fulfill and it was done and so I share that with you guys so that you can understand that there's a lot of sacrifice involved when you want to make things happen and a lot of times it's very inconvenient you know it's not like it's at the, the most uh, reasonable time that things go according you know it work out for us but we got to do what we got to do so that was something that I wanted to share, but I want to share with you guys also some things that we discussed at the event. Now, what I shared was some social marketing tips utilizing Facebook, YouTube, and forum marketing, but my point was to get people to understand how to attract people to you. You know, some folks have natural gifts, some people have, you know, a personality that everybody likes, but at the end of the day, all of us have a market of people that are attracted to us based on our personality type. And so I shared on uh, Saturday how basically to use your story and allow your personality to shine on uh, social media so that you can begin to attract the kind of people that are like-minded to you. So that was my, my tip. Um, right after me, Larry Beecham spoke. Larry Beecham did a phenomenal job. I actually called him the Minister of Network Marketing because he actually spoke to the hearts of the people. Because a lot of times, you know, people want to know, what did you guys do? Give me the secrets. And they want to follow every lead, uh, every step that we take. But you got to make sure that you know your purpose and why you're doing all of this. And you stay in line with what you're called to do. It's great to see people when you consider them role models. But it's bad when you try to adopt everything about that person and let go of yourself. 
I believe that all of us have a specific calling, just like our fingerprints are unique. We're all unique. And it is extremely important to know where your purpose is in internet marketing and network marketing. So um, Larry really touched that a lot and I thought he did a phenomenal job. Then you had Miss Tracy Walker. That is my girl, my buddy, old pal. And she did a phenomenal job. She just really shared her heart and um, talked about blogging. But she talked about blogging being a journal where you can see your progress, your life's progress in your journal, your journey um, in this industry, your journey as you're going forward to, to build and grow as a person. And I'm gonna stop by Mickey D's real quick and get me something for the road. So I'll come back and finish up with what Cedric talked about. All right, y'all, bye-bye.